we are on to our definition right so read about it now it should seem quite intuitive to you rather than you know just cramming it up orbitals first before we define an orbital let's agree on what an orbital is not orbitals do not define a definite path of electron rather they define only the probability of the electron being in various regions of space around the nucleus i think that is self explanatory let's move forward the term atomic orbital refers to the space around the nucleus where the probability of finding an electron is maximum 90 to 95% right okay so the point is look right majority of the times right when we draw it out right when we draw it out right we don't do this dot 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 and also what we can say is that in this plot over here in this plot over here we can say that okay fine you know what i'm considering this region right i'm saying okay i'm neglecting all the uh, all the all the points outside i'm neglecting all those right because if i count all the points inside the circle if i count all the points inside the circle and divide them by the total points and multiplied them by 100 they still come somewhere around let's say 93 94 right so what i can say is that why do we have 90 to 95% because the 5 to 10% can be ignored right that is the region outside this circle now the term that i have been using wrongly till now is circle because it is actually a spherical electron cloud correct that is why we have this spherical orbital being denoted over here correct all right so this is what we have now a couple of orbitals right gave us a similar plot that is a spherical plot so we basically concised all of them together sorry not concised categorized all of them together under a type of orbital called as s orbitals understand all right right so this is an example of s orbital what happens within right why they are same because all of them are spherical right so they are we are calling them s orbitals why they are different what is happening within them that differentiates them that we will study in the last session of atomic structure okay now before we move forward to different type of other orbitals we need to understand a bit of a hierarchy okay so we have a shell we have a shell right okay it's a categorization it's not that round orbit shell no it's just a categorization with a shell right a shell is an accumulation of a lot of subshells right a lot of subshells come together and make a shell or a shell contains a lot of subshells we can say that way as well right this is not a shell this is not a stationary shell of bohr's orbit no this is not this is just a categorization okay within subshells there are a lot of orbitals right so within subshell there are a lot of orbitals so a lot of orbitals of the same type collectively are called as a subshell all right okay fine right okay now if you look here some of the plots came out something like this so we started calling them p orbitals we will go more into what is the meaning of s and p like what are those abbreviations for but for now let's call them p orbitals and turned out that that this arrangement can actually be three ways px this one right in which right this 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 lobe this lobe here right oh wow my diagram skills this lobe here these two lobes here right they are aligned along the x axis notice this here notice this right notice this right they are aligned along the x axis in fact these two lobes are also called as dumbbell right so p orbitals the shape of p orbitals is dumbbell 
we also have py when these are aligned across the along the not across along the y axis and similarly we have pz when they are aligned along the z axis now if you combine px py and pz if you combine px py and pz you get a p sub shell there is a tiny bit of detailing here that i have to mention but that i'll come to later on yeah okay fine on the contrary here in s you do not have different type of s since it's uniform in all directions we have only one thing right so one not this i'll you'll understand later why i cancel that out one s sub shell has only one s orbital right keep that in mind all right let's move forward let's see what else do we have here some of the plots came out something like this right so based on that we started calling them d orbitals right in 3d they looked something like that in 2d they looked something like this right okay so this was four loops so we started calling them double dumbbells understand double dumbbells right now then again we had a lot of uh, classifications within right when we had x and y axis right and the lobes were in between the x and y axis right we call them dxy similarly notice that when we have the lobes this is the z right this is the x right so when we have the lobes between the y and z axis you can notice that these are the two axes which are moving right okay when we had the lobes between the y and z axis we call them dyz and similarly when we had them between zx you notice that y here is there and z and x are the moving ones so when the lobes are between x and z over there we call them dzx or dxz all right right these names we got them from the schrodinger's equation schrodinger equation is the one that tells you the various coordinates x comma y comma z of an electron with its probability understand it's all of these names all of these names weird names dx y y z x z dx square minus y square right we will not go into the detail of how we got that names and the exact solution because simply we are not capable to do that with the mathematics and the physics that we know at our level 10th graduate right that we will know when we uh, go into bachelors or masters or even doctoral programs right even at bachelors level the knowledge is not sufficient enough right right now you will just have to accept these names and remember where are the lobes of d in dxy where are the lobes of d in dx square minus y square for example all three of these are similar that the lobes are between different different axes right okay the lobes do not form along the axes right d x y y z x z and there is a similarity right x y between x and y y z between y and z x z between x and z this here is different it looks similar but the difference is the lobes here are passing through the x and y axis notice that the lobes here are passing through the x and y axes all right and this is the most craziest one right this is also called as a single dumbbell single dumbbell with a donut shaped ring around it right dz square right so with that these were the basic basic orbitals s p d now think about it, right 1 2 3 4 5 these five orbitals 
collectively make the D subshell. What was the shape of D orbitals? Double dumbbell. Correct? Except D is its square. All right. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.